Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I got a quick video for you. I'm gonna be showing you how to get the best recording settings using Stream Elements OBS.live. And I wanna give a quick shout out to HPL Gamers. They were the first person to comment on my last video, so go check out their channel, cause they are awesome. Now if you don't know what Stream Elements is, it's basically a competitor to Stream Labs, but they took the core part of OBS and it uses less resources than Stream Labs does. If you wanna give it a shot, it's totally free and in the description below. Well, let's assume you have Stream Elements installed already and go over to your controls and you're gonna to go to your settings wherever you have it. Click on settings. Once you have that, we wanna go down to video. Now here's the important part. You wanna make sure these settings are correct or else your recording can look terrible. So whatever resolution your monitor is, that's what you wanna make your base canvas resolution. My monitors are 1080p, so I'm gonna keep mine at 1920 by 1080. And your output scaled resolution, you do not have to scale this. So what I like to do is keep that the same as my base canvas resolution. Downscale filter, this doesn't matter since we're not downscaling. You wanna keep that at Langzos regardless. For common FPS value, I like to keep it at 60 because that is the maximum frame rate most people can watch if they have 60 hertz monitors. That provides the smoothest recording as you're seeing right now. Hit apply, and then we want to go to output. And then under output mode, make sure you have advanced chosen because it starts off on simple. Go over to the second tab and you're gonna hit recording tab. For type, go ahead and keep that standard. Recording path, tell it wherever you wanna record. You can click browse and then select a folder you wanna record it in. Recording format, I like MP4. You can do move, but MP4 is the most compatible thing with Windows computers. You can tell it which audio tracks you wanna record or how many audio tracks. I usually do number one for my game and number two for my voice, so it separates it. The encoder, you can do this a couple different ways. If you have like a GTX graphics card or an NVIDIA graphics card, you're gonna see an NVIDIA encoder selection here. And if you have an AMD graphics card, like a Vega 64 or something like that, you're gonna see an AMD encoder here. But all the time, you're gonna be seeing X264, which that means your processor. So I personally like to use X264 because I have a pretty good processor. Now, a bad processor or an old processor is something like an i3 or an i5 or an older like fourth, fifth gen i7. Those are kind of past the threshold and into the medium to bad computer range. If you have like a newer i7, like an eighth gen or an i9 or a Ryzen 1800X or a 20, Ryzen 20s, Ryzen 30s, things like that, that moves over into the good computer range. So if you choose the X264 encoder, you're gonna see some options down here. And look, if you choose the NVIDIA or the AMD, the options are gonna change a little bit. So I'll go over both of those as well. So I'm gonna do X264 because that's the one I recommend. If you go down here, you have four options, CBR, ABR, VBR, and CRF. CBR stands for constant bitrate. You basically tell it a bitrate. It does its best to keep that bitrate right there. ABR means average bitrate, so you tell it a bitrate, and it does its best, but it has a little bit of fluctuation room depending on what's going on on your computer. VBR is very similar to ABR. It's variable bitrate. You tell it a bitrate. It does its best to stay right at that bitrate, but can fluctuate even more to accommodate for what's going on in the screen. But the one I like is CRF, which is constant rate factor. It's basically like a quality scale, and the lower number you go on the scale, the higher quality it is. The higher number you go on the scale, the lower quality is. I know that's confusing, but it's simple once you look at it in a rating perspective. For CRF, I don't ever go anything past 15. What I like to do is keep it at 17. Any higher number you go, your file size is gonna get really, really big. So for me, 15 through 17, I really do like 17. That keeps my file size pretty low, but keeps the quality really, really high. So try it out, anywhere from 15 through 17, maybe even try 20. Give it a shot. It's all gonna be a little bit different for everybody's computer. Keep frame interval, you can keep it zero. If you want it, that's auto, but if you have a lot of fast moving things going on, then you can change it to one. If you don't have too many things going on, maybe almost like this, what I'm showing you right here, there's not a lot of moving pixels. I can keep this number two and it's gonna lower my file size because it's not gonna have to keep rendering each frame because it's remembering where all the pixels are. So regardless, I like to keep mine at one just to keep the quality up there. CPU usage, this is basically a rating from bad computer to good computer. The higher it is, the less CPU power it's using. The lower it is, the more CPU power. So if you have like an i3 or an i5 or an old i7, then you wanna keep yours at ultra fast or super fast, maybe very fast, the top three or four. If you have a really good processor, like a new Ryzen or an i9, then you can go down to medium, slow, and slower. 
somewhere right there. But the lower you go, you can try hitting placebo or very slow, and it may look good when you're recording it, but when you play it back, it may be way too choppy because, oh, maybe your computers are being overutilized. If you look down here at the bottom right, you'll see the CPU usage, and you wanna make sure that's never really above like 30, 40, or 50. That means it's utilizing way too much CPU. So you go ahead and drop your CPU usage preset up to faster, very fast, or super fast. So a really good number for me, I like, I like medium, fast. Those two work really well for me. Profile, you have three options here, baseline, main, or high. No one really chooses baseline. That one's more of a proprietary thing. Main is good usually if people are watching on their phones, and then high is good if people are watching on their computers. They really don't make too much of a difference when you choose them, so I usually choose high for mine. Tune, you don't gotta worry about that. These are all just proprietary options nobody really uses. If you wanna learn more about them, Google them, you'll see what they all do. But I just keep my tune at none. X264 options, you could go ahead and leave this blank. Basically here you could type in special commands to do special things, but you really don't need to do that when you're recording because it doesn't take too much CPU power to record a screen. And so those are the best options for X264. Now if you have a graphics card like mine, a GTX, something like that, then you're gonna see the Nvidia options. So let me go over those real fast. Make sure you're not rescaling your output, of course. You can skip custom muxer settings. You don't need to change that. That's again, special commands and settings for proprietary things. So we can go down to the control and two of these options have changed. But now we have CQP and then we have VBR and then we have lossless. Now I know lossless sounds good, like it's the best you can possibly get, but I've recorded things in lossless before using a graphics card and they come up terrible when you're trying to edit them. So I put them in like Vegas or something like that. They'll either come up black and white or you'll see some weird things when you use lossless. It may look good when you're watching it in VLC, but when you edit it, it's not good. So I like to use CQP, which is basically like CRF. It has that scale from zero to 52. Change your CQ level. I have mine at about 17 usually. Keyframe interval, again, you can keep it at one or two to your call. One is for lots of motion on your screen. Two is for less motion on your screen. Preset quality, you have a lot of options here, but they don't really make too much of a difference. You can give it a shot and test the quality for yourself, but I like to keep mine on quality. You can do max quality if you have a really good computer. You know, quality or max quality is good. You can do low latency quality, but these low latency options, you really don't need to go for those because you're not really gonna see any kind of delay between your clicks and whatnot. It's all gonna be pretty much instantaneous. So quality or max quality is the best preset options that I've used. Profile, again, I just choose mine high. GPU, this is basically a GPU scale, like a zero, one, two, three. The higher number you go, the more GPU that's gonna be used. And so there's not really a set range that is standard to use. So if you wanted to give it a shot, you can change that to one, record something, see how it looks. You can change it to two, three, and basically you're just gonna be using more and more GPU power to record your screen. Now, the higher you go with it, you know, you could max out your GPU and your recording may look terrible. So give it a shot. If you have a really good GPU, put it on one, see what it looks like. Put it on two, see what it looks like. I'm just gonna keep mine on zero because you really can't tell the difference when you change that number. B frames, generally speaking, are just a quality scale again. The higher you go, the more GPU they're gonna use. The lower you go, the less GPU they're gonna use. By default, they're on two. The recordings look really well when you do that. If you want it higher quality, crank it up. You know, max out your graphics card, see what it looks like. You know, you just have to test these things because everybody's graphics card is different. So I like to keep my max B frames on two. And those right there are the best settings for NVIDIA. The settings, I don't believe they are any different for AMD. I think they're really close to the same thing. And so you can match these for AMD graphics card as well. And again, if you want to use your processor, X264, these are the best settings. They're going to provide you the best looking recording through OBS and stream elements and the most compatible when editing them. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you got any questions, shoot them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer all of them. And if this video helped you out, be sure to throw a like and subscribe because that'll help me out. I'm really close to 6,000 subscribers and that'd be cool if I hit a million subscribers by the end of the year. Maybe I could even do a billion. But again, that's going to wrap it up and I'll see you guys in the next video. Just a heads up, these are my current patrons. They all support me for a dollar a month. It's very cheap, and you can too. And don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell notification next to the subscribe button, because that notifies you whenever I pump out a new video. And if you're the first person to comment on the video, you get a special shout out in my next video.
So thanks again for watching.